In this video, I'm going to take up the MCR3 Unit 4 test on exponential functions. If you haven't um, printed up the test and tried it yourself, you can always just stop the video and try the question and then come back to see if you've got the correct answer. So it's a pretty long test. I realized when I was um, doing it for you and um, hopefully yours isn't quite this long, but I might have to do this in, in two parts if it gets too long. So part A, knowledge, simply simplify, then evaluate the following expression, show all your work, decimal answers will not be accepted. In other words, your teacher does not want you to just plug this into a calculator and give you an answer, and give an answer right? You have to show that you understand the um, exponential laws. So the first thing I would do when I look at this, you see this is a negative exponent here and a negative exponent here. Um, this one in particular, because this is a fraction, I can make this into a positive, a positive exponent by flipping the fraction. So that's one of the key things I would do first. So I would write this as 64. You can put it over one if you want, to the one third. And this one I'm just going to evaluate as I get to it because I know the half power is the square root. So I'm adding the square root of 25 over nine. Don't forget to take the square root of both parts. So five over three. And this one as well, the negative two thirds, I can write this as one over 27 and make it to the positive two thirds, which makes things just a little easier to evaluate. So 64 to the one third, that's asking for the cube root of 64, which I know is four. To that I'm adding 5 thirds and then this one I want the cube root so it doesn't matter a 1 if I take doesn't matter what root and how many times I raise it to another power the answer is always going to be 1 so I'm only looking down here but I know my answer is going to be 1 over the cube root of 27 which is 3 then square it which is 9. Okay so now all you have left to do is write this with uh, common denominator, so I'm going to make everything in terms of ninths. So four is 36 over nine, five thirds would be 15 over nine, and then subtract one ninth. So this is 14 and 36, that's going to give me, I'll bring it up here, 50 over nine, and you're done. Number two, simplify each of the following expressions. Express your final answer in radical form when applicable. Okay, well, we'll get to that when we get to it, right? Okay, so first things first here, this one here, 2a, we have m cubed n all in brackets cubed. So remember that you must apply this exponent to every term in the brackets. So because this is power to a power, I'm multiplying. So that's going to give me m to the ninth, n to the third. And in the denominator, I have minus two to the power four. So because it's an even exponent, this is going to make this positive and two to the power four is 16. And then m two to the fourth, that's m to the eighth. You're multiplying, remember and n to the 20th. Okay, now don't stop there because we still have m's and n's in the numerator and the denominator. I only have one constant here and that would be 16, which is in the denominator, I'll leave it there. And now I'm going to do my m's. So I have nine in the top and eight in the bottom. So nine minus eight is one m. And I have more n's in the denominator. So in order to keep my exponents positive, I'm going to do 20 minus three is going to give me n to the 17th power. And that's as far as you can go. And there's no radical form for this. Okay, so question B now. I have some more negative exponents. So the first thing I would do is deal with the constants here. So I have 25 over 75. So that's one over three. Right, so I can put a one here. I'll put it here for now, just so you know what happened. So I divided by 25, divided by 25. Now I look at my letters here. So this is a negative exponent. 
So I'm going to put that one into the denominator. I shouldn't really call them letters. I should call them variables, right? So I have a to the one half, that was here. I'm going to bring this to the denominator to make it positive. So a to the two thirds. And in the numerator, I have b to the three quarters. And this b down here, if I bring it up, becomes positive. So b to the minus two. So now I've got everything with positive exponents and of course everything's nicely organized here. Whoops, I put a negative there, I brought it up and I forgot to change the sign. That would be a mistake. Okay, so sometimes when I'm talking and I'm doing things, I'm not paying too much attention here. Okay, so I need to, these both to be with quarters in the denominator. So this is eight over four, three over four, that gives me b to the 11 over four. And in the denominator, I still have the three, and I have a's, I'm adding two thirds, or one half and two thirds, so I'm going to make them six, that's three, six, four, six, that's seven over six. And there you go. You already have 11 marks. How clever is that? Okay, for the next question here, now we have 2x to the 2 thirds to the minus 2. Now you have to be careful because as you can see this is the whole thing is to the minus 2. Whereas this little one here, this minus 5 is only for the x. So the 3 is going to stay where it is. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is make me some positive exponents. So for this one, I'm going to move this 2x to the 2 thirds to the minus 2 to the denominator. I'll do lots of steps here so you don't miss out on something here. So this is 2x to the 2 thirds and it's all squared. And it's in the denominator because I moved it down here. And I still have x, y squared to the 2 thirds here. And I'm still multiplying by 2y squared now I'm going to do a little magic here while I work on this one because this is to the negative exponent. I'm gonna bring it up here. That's gonna make it x to the fifth and I still have two thirds. Okay, so everything is good. I'll put a one there. And now I'm going to um, work with these exponents here. So I have one over, now remember, two squared, this squared, everything. Don't just do one part of this. So I have two squared is four, x to the two thirds squared is going to be x to the four thirds. And this one here, everything to the two thirds, so it's gonna be x to the two thirds, y to the four thirds. So I think the trick, if there is such a thing with these questions is, just not to get too overwhelmed with all your exponents. Just take it one step at a time. Don't get frustrated. Okay, so now I've got all this mess to deal with. And I'm going to divide this two into this four and make this two, just to get rid of some of the constants. So now, what have I left with? I think, I think I'll bring it up here. Okay, so I have in the top, I have y squared x to the fifth. That's all I have in the top, y squared x to the fifth. And in the denominator, I have two times three, which is six, and I have x to the four thirds plus two thirds, four thirds and two thirds is six thirds, which is two. So I have x squared and I have y to the four thirds. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, it's getting nice and neat. Don't forget your equal signs. Okay, so now I'm going to simplify my variables because I don't want to have x squared and y squared in both places. So I have y squared, so that's six thirds minus four thirds is going to give me y to the two thirds. So I'm just subtracting because this is in the denominator. This was six, this was four over three. And I have x to the fifth x squared. So five minus two is going to be cubed, x cubed. And that's all over six. 
Okay, now I could write this in a radical form because I could pull out this, this is one over six, right? I can put that out front. And y to the two thirds would be the cube root of y squared and then x cubed. That would be a very fancy, lovely answer. Okay, so next page. I had to get my mom to print this out for me, believe it or not. My 89.75 year old mother. I don't have a printer. I should, shouldn't I? I'm gonna do this for you. Okay, number three. Get this on the screen. Evaluate the following expression for x equals minus three and n equals two. Well, you could start plugging those numbers in right now, but I would highly suggest, and it makes things so much easier, if you simplify this first. And I think that would probably be what your teacher would want you to do. It, that's exactly what I wanted my students to do. So I want you to just show me that you know that if I'm multiplying, I would add the exponents, and if I'm dividing, I would subtract the exponents. So that means I'm going to have x to the 2n minus 1. So I'm multiplying, I'm going to add 3n minus 1, and I'm going to subtract 2n minus 5. And by doing that, I can simplify this very easily and then plug in minus 3 and 2 in the end. So I have 2n plus 3n minus 2n, which is just 3n, so I have x to the 3n. And for my constants here, I have minus 1, minus 1, that's minus 2, plus 5 is 3. So I have x to the 3n plus 3. And now it's much easier to plug in my value. So x is minus 3, put it in brackets. N is 2, so I have 3 times 2 plus 3. And that's going to be minus 3 to the power of 9. Now evaluate. This isn't finished, right? You would have to get out your calculator. And I did use my calculator to get this answer. Obviously, I couldn't do that in my head. And I doubt very much you could either. Okay, number four, simplify. Express the answer in rational form with positive exponents. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is get rid of these brackets. I'm gonna work my way from the inside out here a bit, okay? So the square root of 64a to the 12. Now, you can write it like this, and, and I'm, I'll do that just because maybe it might help you to, to see what we've got here. So this 64a to the 12, you probably would tell me, um, you probably could evaluate that in your head, right? But I'll, I'll write it out like this first, a to the 12 to the half power. And down here, and don't forget we've got a big bracket here, and still to the 2 thirds. And in the denominator, 1.5 times 6 is, or minus 6 is minus 9. So I have a to the minus 9. Now all still to the 2 thirds. So 64 to the half is the square root of 64, which is 8, and a to the 12 to the half is a to the six, because I'm multiplying, that'll give me 12 over two, which is six. And in the denominator, I still have a to the minus nine, and I have this to the two thirds. Now, there's lots of different orders that you could do this in, right? There's no, no right or wrong way. But I would say, okay, well, I have a to the 6, and I've got a to the minus 9 here, so that's going to give me 8, a to the 15th, now to the 2 thirds. And I'll just do the last little bit here, bring it over here. So the cube root of 8, so you look to the denominator first, right? The cube root of 8 is 2, 2 squared is 4, there's my constant. And 15 divided by 3 would be 5 times 2 is 10. So I have 4a to the 10th. Now, 
Let's make sure I did everything right there. Cube root of eight is two, two squared is four. No, okay, so I must have done a mistake when I did it the first time. Okay, so let's go down to number five here. Evaluate, express in rational form. I just want to double check what I did here. Minus nine. No, I did a mistake there, didn't I? I did it right the first time. Let's go back here just for a second here. So this was um, 6 minus, minus 9 is 15. That's 10, 8 of the 10. I don't know why I got such a wrong answer the last time I did it. I must have done something wrong. It's A to the... Yeah, I did. I made a mistake on my the first time. It's right this time. Sorry. Let's go back. Okay, evaluate. Express the answer in rational form. So, ooh, look at all these crazy little numbers here for you. Okay, so this is much easier than you think because the cube root of 512, you could do that on a calculator. Now, if you don't know how, I'll just show you here for one second. So if I have 512 and I'm doing the cube root, so I make it to the power of, and you need brackets here, so that's to the one third, right? 512 to the one third, and the answer is eight. Now you do have a minus sign out front, so don't forget that, minus eight. And for this one, the fifth root of minus 1024, you know it's going to be negative because you're taking the fifth root of a negative number. So you can do, um, well you can put it in brackets like this, 1024, minus 1024 to the power of, that would be helpful if I showed you, minus 1024 to the power of, bracket now, one divided by five. And that gives you minus four. So I have, minus 8 divided by minus 4, and my answer is just 2. How simple is that? Okay, how's our time here? We're up to 17 minutes. Um, I think I got the wrong page here first. Here it is here. Part B, application. Oh, maybe I'll stop right here, and I'll do the last part on the second video. Okay, so um, make sure you print it out. This one is kind of long to do if you don't have a printer. <clears throat> okay, we'll see you in the next video.